Open a rail supply box. You've all seen the foam butt caddis before. Uh, I've tied it in a couple different versions here. Uh, I'm going to go over the, the pattern that I've fished the last two seasons. Um, it's taken place of pretty much all the rest of them. Uh, a couple variations were made. I wanted to make this fly more of a crossover for bluegill and bass, even though this pattern started out as a cricket pattern for trout. Uh, and I still fish it as such in, in that version. Uh, but to, to cross over, you need something that's large enough to keep the dinks off in the bluegill pool, and uh, but not too large that you can't still catch a good 8-inch inch, inch cross the back bluegill. Uh, I don't think anybody wants to miss those. Uh, and it will still bring large bass to the top. It does year after year, and especially now. So let's go over how I changed it. Uh, one, I got rid of the chin on the old pattern. You'll see that. I've gone back and forth between leaving a chin on, dubbing a chin, leaving the foam on there. I found uh, in the end, uh, leave the chin off and it works just fine. Uh, and I've gone to a stinger hook. Uh, this is a size 6 stinger. This is the small one that I tie. Uh, this is easily taken by bluegill, uh, decent sized bluegill. And you can, still can uh, catch, uh, still catch an occasional dink on this. They will take it, but as a rule, uh, it has to be a little bit of a decent bluegill to come up and uh, suck this thing down. So let's go over how I tie it. This is again a Gamagatsu size 6 stinger hook and I'm using 6 aught black thread and we're going to tie wrap a base back And we're going to come right back to where the stinger starts to drop off. So the shank of the hook is just a little bit different on a stinger. You can't. You got to be careful. You don't go around the bend. If you go around the bend, it'll, uh, it'll mess the tail up on this pattern. And next, you're going to tie in your your foam. I use thin razor foam, black. I I use black for most all my patterns. <coughs> Excuse me. And I slice. I I buy it in the sheets, and I slice it to three sixteenths. Uh, in strips uh, specifically for this pattern. And what I'm going to do is bring my thread back now in the front. I'm not going to crowd too much. I want to leave room for my head. So about an eye length on this fly back. I'm going to start the foam and then just maintaining it on top. If you've seen the other ones you understand this part. Now uh, if this is a new pattern you're seeing. And then I come back over and I bind that down real good. And then bring it back to the end point. And what you're going to do is you're going to tie in a butt that's about the same. It basically duplicates the gape of the hook as far as length goes. About as long as the gape of that stinger is vertically. And bind down your loop. You can adjust it. This isn't uh, rocket science with this foam. If you, if you need to take an extra wrap in one direction, that's fine. Then maintaining it on top as good as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're going you're gonna to wrap this down. I bring my thread forward. And then cut your foam off. At this point, you're going to want it, you're going to bind it down. You want it nice and thin, get it fairly slim, even taper. You don't have to go nuts over it. There you go. And then again, bring your thread back to the rear. Next material you're going to tie in is your hackle. I use black dry fly hackle. Saddle or neck, doesn't matter, whatever you have. And it's in size 10. Okay, it's it's not the same. It's not a 6 like to match the hook. It's a 10. I trim a fairly long base. And you're going to tie that in at the tail or at the tail loop. And and I don't I don't keep a exact thread base on this. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it doesn't matter if you can see that hackle base. 
and then you're going to polymer that hackle forward. I keep it evenly spaced, probably a sixteenth of an inch, about like you would if you were palmering any dry fly. And when I bring it to the front, I give it an extra turn in place. Had a lot of people ask me, do you do you rib this? And the, the answer is no. I don't rib this pattern. And I don't have a problem with the hackle staying, staying on or coming off. Yeah, this is a very durable fly as it is tied. I suppose you could tie a rib on here. Uh, it's got enough floatability or buoyancy for a better word. But uh, I do not use a rib. I, th I believe I tried, I used a thread rib for a while and just got tired of doing it because I didn't feel it was necessary in the end. Okay. Remember you're leaving that gape right there. This has got an elk hair caddis style wing on it and you're still going to add a leg. So you, you can't crowd the eye too much. Next material you're going to tie in are medium centipede legs. I specifically use the centipede legs because it's got the right consistency. It's the stiffness I want. Uh, this works kind of as a rudder for this fly. Uh, it doesn't really matter the color. Uh, brown black is my most used or olive black. This one right here. Uh, the original pattern was tied with black and white because that's uh, really all that was available when I first tied this pattern. But uh, Olive black or, or brown black seems to be my, my, my two most popular as far as the fish go. What you're going to do is I use this single leg for the entire fly. I cross it over and bind it down. I just capture it is all I do. And I wrap back into it far enough into the hackle, leaving it on top and leaving the near one at about a 45 degree angle. Then I'm going to fold it back on itself and wrap, just wrap in and grab a bite, basically. So, so you're tying a loop. And wrap back into it. You want these, uh, these legs to be splayed out at not quite 90, a little bit closer to 45 degrees. Or, but uh, they will get pushed back with the hair. So once I get that bound down to where I want, I'll move my thread, make sure it's locked in place, and there you go, I trim that last. The next material you're going to tie in is your wing. I use ginger. You can use light elk, but I found ginger seems to be a little bit more popular here in South Jersey. Uh, ginger elk. I stack about what you would tie for an elk hair caddis in a size 6, if that's what you were tying. Um, I stack it. I tie it in shank length. And I tie this in a little bit, maybe unorthodox. It's not necessarily how you would uh, do it for a true elk hair caddis. I tie in first, leave it pinched, give a good collar. Then I sweep back my head. And I bind back into the head a little bit in the chin area. and you'll see it still moves a little bit and then I bring it back and I bind down good and tight again in the collar and then for my whip finish
I get my whip finish ready. I hang it over my fingers. I sweep the head back. And I give a good four or five wrap whip finish in there. And clip it off. This is a full head. And then I sweep up, cut it about a 45. I leave the head full. You don't want to trim this too short. Prominent head seems to be a very big trigger for this pattern. Yeah, it looks like I captured a few hairs down below. Trim them off. There we go. One more is in the way. Okay. Then what I do is, while I have it upside down here, I usually flip it over. Trim to make sure I clear the eye. And give a good heavy dab with a brush on the underside of that collar. Okay. Then making sure that my legs are where I want them. I don't have any hairs forcing them in any direction. I'm going to lift them up and I'm going to trim them off, not stretching them, holding them even. I'll trim them off even with the back of the hook in length. flyer here and it's broken and there it is the improved Elcare caddis or foam butt caddis it uh, has been a, a solid performer for me all summer you see the delta that you get right there with the centipede legs if you use too small these are the mediums if you use too small the legs give in to the hair and the downward pressure they move too much and they tangle up. You want the medium centipede legs for the stiffness, and that's the length. The foam butt caddis. Excellent for large bluegill. Crosses over for bass. I caught a, a, a pot full of bass uh, the past two summers with this pattern. Uh, Twitch it through the lily pads, twitch it through open water, twitch it along the banks. They kill it. Hope it adds to your box. Good luck. See you on the water.